Okay, so this is our welcome this morning. Uh, I quite liked this diagram. Um, two things from it. It puts Christ at the centre, which I guess is what it was designed to show, but it also shows that our relationship with God in Jesus should be linked to our work and our hobbies and our recreation and our friends and our family and our relaxing and our school and our money. So what we've come to do this morning is to re, or for the first time, centre everything, all the different aspects of our lives around this central grounding of Jesus. I wonder what the earliest thing, song, rhyme, sentence you can remember that you knew is. Have a think. Oh, Marion's got her hand up and without wishing to be rude, that's quite a long while ago. Oh, well done, Marion. Marion remembers, Jesus loves me, this I know. Um, I've put up row, row, row your boat, because that's definitely Ezra's, and I know it's the earliest, because it's the only one. That is the entire memorised repertoire at the moment. And that's because that's what he was taught. And Marion didn't work out... Um, I don't think, uh, Jesus loves me, this I know for herself, somebody taught it to her. And so we've got a picture here of the importance of learning and talking, especially where people don't have access to books or computers or cannot read. And I read this week, uh, which is quite unusual for me because I don't usually read much round what I'm going to do. I usually just uh, go, with, go with what's in front of me. But I came across this idea that the early Christians, before the New Testament was written down, would have relied on an oral tradition, talking, people teaching them, and that they obviously therefore used songs, but they also used creedal, believing statements. And those things were quite important in a early faith that didn't have of its, of its own part. I know they had the Old Testament, what we would think of as the Old Testament scriptures, but they didn't have theirs written down. And it is thought by some, and I do not know how widely this is held, but it makes sense to me, that this statement that Sharon is about to read us um, dates from as early as 30 AD, i.e. almost as Jesus died and rose. This is what people learnt by heart and were taught, and then it was written down in the scriptures, but it predates the writing of Paul's letter to the Corinthians, and it predates the rest of the written New Testament. And it was what people, part of what people learnt and were taught so that they hung on to the important parts of their faith. So, uh, Sharon, if you're ready, can you read us, please, uh, this section from 1 Corinthians 15? For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Thank you, Sharon, and uh, best wishes to all the family. So, we have this early statement of what was really important. It's what the early Christians received and then what they passed on. 
We're going to be thinking a lot today about receiving and passing on and giving. Uh, so we're going to sing now. And this, to me, focuses on what we have received. It summarises. It's almost like a creedal statement. It's like, what are the crucial things that we believe? about the coming of God in Jesus. And so we're going to focus for a bit on what we have received. Uh, we're now allowed to sing in church. If you um, are concerned, I suggest you either go outside or to the back of the building. And uh, if you're at home, you don't have any worries about that. So let's focus on what we have received as we sing. Uh, so we give you thanks, dear God for all that we have received from you. Most of all, we give you thanks for an Emmanuel God, a God with us. Amen. So we're going to follow in this early church tradition. And uh, as we get used to more of us gathering together again, I thought it was quite important that um, in one sense, these weeks of the schools returning and activities beginning again, and there is a slight sense, I think, of a new beginning. And we want our new beginning to be based on a belief and a trust in God the Father, in God the Son, and in God the Holy Spirit. And we need to do that both for ourselves, hence the I believe and trust in him. And we need to do that as a gathered community. This is our faith. Uh, so um, I wonder whether... on shouting oh there we are uh might like to actually stand for this but no um no pressure for those for whom that is difficult but we are declaring to god and to each other the faith of the church uh, and it does not require the ability to read the responses are i believe and trust in him okay so do you believe and trust in God, the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God, the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay. So I hope those first few moments of the service have reminded you, convinced you, encouraged you that you have received much. And uh, we're going to think about carrying on receiving, but also, in the words of Jesus, freely you have received, freely give. Children, in about 10 minutes or so, you are going to receive gifts from the tree, okay? But you are also going to give to the tree. Well, actually, you're going to give to the people, but via the tree, okay? Can you see the white dove on the front of the tree? In your wallets, I want you to start making those. You've got everything you should need in your wallet, so that by the time you come to receive your book or your bangle, you are able to give to the tree 
at least one dove and maybe a few more than that. Okay, so it's a, a two way process receiving and giving. So you can fiddle around in your bags, you should find what you need. You need to concertina fold your white paper, cut your dove out, poke the wings through the slit, give him an eye, give him some gold stickers to decorate in, especially if you're Rosie George, and then make a loop to hang up your dove. And I'm sure the adults who are with you can help you. And those that can't have been pre-trained. Okay, uh, now we are also, having told you to start with your doves, you need more than a little eye out for this. Uh, because uh, something else that Jesus said, is, you are the salt of the earth. And Nina and Liv are going to give us a little bit of a feel of what that might mean. Thank you very much. Well, I was in a... Oh. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure that they can see you at home. So if you... Whoops. Yeah, okay. That, 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 they, they, that's, that's what they're seeing at home. So therefore, they... Uh, I think all the technology is now working. Take it away. Morning. Good morning. Look, I'm really sorry to be a pain, but I'm afraid I've got a complaint about a salt pot I bought yesterday. I see. And what is the problem? Well, I was in a bit of a hurry, so I didn't look very closely. And when I got it home, I realised it didn't have a hole in the top. No, that's right. It wouldn't have. I beg your pardon. It wouldn't have. It's a new line. Well, look, I'm sorry if I appear a little slow, but if there's no hole in the top, how do I get the salt out of the pot? Don't. That's the point. What's the point? I don't think it's good at all. I think it's just silly. Look, it hasn't got in the hole in the top to protect the salt. From what? Well, if you really want to know, from the cruel world outside, as if salt hasn't gone through enough already. There it's lain for hundreds of years in some wonderful corner of the world like Siberia. It gets hacked about with some miner's axe and then ground into tiny pieces in some slaughterhouse known as a mill. And then when it at last reaches the haven of your salt pot, well, all you can think about is putting it through the same grisly nightmare again. Well, I say, have a heart. I don't think we're on the same wavelength at all, are we? Why not? Don't you understand? Well, I must confess, I'm having some difficulty. What's all this grisly nightmare business? Mine's a very nice home. What's all this grisly nightmare business, you say? As if you can't guess. I can't. Well, I'll tell you then. It's been tipped out of a pot to fall maybe hundreds, hundreds of millimetres to your plate. It's landing on hot roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. It's seeing the steely blade of your knife bearing down upon it. And it's seeing your gleaming, well-toothed mouth opening wide and salivating. That is a grisly nightmare. It's a very dangerous world outside of that salt pot. Yes. I think I'm coming to see your point. So what do you have in mind? I have in mind a world of wholeless salt pots. Communities where salt at last can be free to live in peace without fear, where grain shall live with grain in true harmony, accepted and loved, released from the terror of this cruel world. But but my soul actually likes salting my food. Well, we've all heard that one before. It does. That's why it exists. 
to salt things and bring new flavour and excitement to eating. Well, it all sounds a bit selfish to me. Selfish? How? Well, it sounds as though the salt has really got the good end of the deal, doesn't it? As long as it's at your service, seeking to make your life a better place, you're quite happy. Try and protect the stuff and you get all uppity. Look. Look, my dear customer, take this salt pot, be a pioneer, let your salt mind its own business and you mind yours, hmm? Well, if you put it like that, I suppose I have been a bit selfish in the past. Yes, you're right. I'll take this, I'll take this home and do my bit. I'll do my bit to make the world a better place for salt. Goodbye and thank you, miss. Crew it, but you can call me Lottie. And never being of any use to anyone again is not actually an option. Uh, and thank you very much, Nina and Liv. Uh, however, we do stand at a tricky point, I think. Uh, we're in a world where we have to live, we think, with COVID in the same way as for hundreds of years we've lived with flu, and we've lived with all sorts of difficulties, environmental, as well as disease and economic issues and all the rest of it. And we have to work out what might receiving and giving look like, given the realities of the world in which we live. And we have to work out, as things begin again, what our part is in those. Uh, depending on our own physical circumstances, depending on our own economic circumstances, uh, we have to work out, I think, what our receiving and our giving might look like. Uh, and for some of us, the problem might be that we're not very good at receiving. And for others, the problem might be that we struggle more with the giving. Some of us might try and do one and not the other. So I quite liked this because it's got a single figure of eight made up of giving and receiving. And both are integral to each other. So this is not an attempt to say, you need to give more, give more, give more. This is an attempt to say, as rounded Christians, we need to work on receiving from God, receiving from others, and giving as appropriate in this slightly new version of our world. Uh, I wanted us to sing for a moment and just to begin to think in practice what this freely giving might look like for us. And it will be different for each of us. And it's not necessarily more, it might be less. It might be, I need to receive in order to give. It might be practical. It might not be practical. So just spend this song um, thinking through what this might mean for you. So actually, I think we might sit, most of us, for this, although I'm not going to ban standing, but I would like to encourage thinking. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is not supposed to make the rest of us feel inadequate, but uh, my guess is for some of us it will. Uh, but we are going to watch a BMS video now um, where the circumstances in which these individuals are working are so dire that we can't even see their faces. 
So you get cartoons of the individuals um, because uh, their version of giving actually makes it so dangerous that uh, we can't even see exactly who they are. And we might think at the end of it, well, what can we do? Um, we can pray and some of us can give financially. And Ken, are you okay to pray at the end of this? in the light of what you hear thank you very much so if you just march up when you're ready ken but don't touch the vid uh, don't touch the microphone or else you get shot <laughs> don't get shot i'm dead already <laughs> i saw jesus 2000 years ago I was watching a vision. It wasn't like a dream. I was there with them. I saw he had 12 students. I saw him healing people, preaching. I hadn't read the Bible, but I saw it happening. When I woke up from the vision, I went to my neighbor, who I knew was a Christian. I told her my story, and she fell to the ground and couldn't say a word. She gave me a Bible and opened it in Matthew. It was unbelievable. What I read, that is what I had seen. In that moment, something inside me changed. The next two weeks were the best two weeks of my life. I was in a very hard situation, and my situation did not change, but I changed. My life started from that moment. I didn't tell anyone I was a Christian because I was afraid. Two years later, I moved countries. I tried every church, but they refused to baptize me. It's an Islamic country. If you change from Islam to Christianity, it really costs lives. I was learning the Bible by myself and searching for eight years. Then God found me a private teacher. It was a miracle. I learned and I started telling my family. I started with my brother. He accepted Jesus. Then I told my older sister, she accepted Jesus. Most of my family are Christians now. After that, we started this small ministry. We're helping people who are in need. We do work here and in my home country. In my home country, so many people became Christians, like 1,200 people. When the neighbors saw this, they tried to harm these people. But the Christians didn't care, even if it cost them their lives. I don't know exactly what will happen, but I want to serve God. When my mom found out I was a Christian, she said, I bore you in my womb, but I wish I didn't. Choosing to follow Christ was not easy. I'm from a Muslim background, and I saw myself on one side and my parents on the other. And I wondered, am I right and they're wrong? I would have rather been wrong and them right. There was no physical violence, but they stopped talking to me. My mom and dad are really dear to me, it was really hard. When my parents stopped talking to me, I was called into full-time ministry. At first, I wanted to have both my family and the truth. But the truth has set me free and I cannot not speak it. My ministry is on Facebook, which is really effective for reaching people. I remain anonymous, which gives people more freedom to talk. The people I talk with are Muslims. I understand the people who message with questions because I was once there. I want to learn more so I may be ready to answer as many questions as possible. I miss my family a lot. I do long for them, but I just don't want to give up Jesus. The Lord has performed a lot of miracles for me. He takes care of me. He answers my questions. The little details, they all add up. And when I think of them all, I can't but give all I have for him.
I made a promise that I would not let any Christians live in my area, nor would I let any church nearby survive. I was born into an orthodox Hindu family. I joined an extremist Hindu group and my life's main goal was to catch Christians and beat them up. One day, I met a man and he asked me, Why are you doing this? Why are you attacking people who have not done anything to you? And he gave me a New Testament and said, Why don't you read it? I started reading the New Testament and then almost every day I wanted to read that book. I saw how, how Jesus taught his disciples to pray and I learned to pray like that. And then one day I read, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? And it hit me. After that, I secretly started meeting with the Christians and learning from them. My village discovered I'd become a Christian and they tried to throw me out. They separated from me and said, we will not give you water to drink and we will not associate with you. It's, uh, it's been more than 20 years and I'm still separated from some of my village, but now out of 30 families living here, 22 families have come to know Jesus. And I pray that one day it will become an entirely Christian village. I also now oversee 150 small groups in my region. I know that following the Lord is not easy. I've suffered persecution and had terrible things done to me, but in all of that, I, I have hope. The Lord Jesus came into my life, taking me from persecution to praise. He's everything to me. He is life. I pray that I will be able to complete the vision that, that God has given me to reach out to as many people as I can. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We pray for the BMS appeal. We pray that it's for its success and its ability to spread the word of uh, your word far and wide across the world, to reach across boundaries, across religions, across ethnic groups, across cultures, and to shed light to the whole world and to the people who live in it. We bless, we pray that you bless the people who stand in your name people who stand against injustice, oppression, segregation, discrimination, physical abuse, and uh, beatings, and intolerance. It's so sad, and that in this day, we still have to fight for our religion, and to um, also be segregated from our families. We, we pray that you bless those who stand against your loved ones, um, families who do not see your love, to open their eyes and their hearts to your way and your love. We heal, we pray that you heal the bitterness, hate and the rift between them, and heal the families and heal the peoples, and heal the hearts. We pray in Jesus', Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Um, and 5% uh, of our money does go towards world mission. But I think they can always do with some more. Right, children, I am hoping you are ready to contribute some doves to the tree. 
Yes. Um, I would like if all the children or the young people who are of secondary school age to bring at least one dove to the front and gather in a little circle round that tree with Alison. Can you do that? Don't bring all of your family's doves or else your younger siblings will have nothing to contribute. So that should be Liv and I'm sure I've seen Emma and I've seen Aaron and I've seen Salvador. That's it. You're very law abiding, you lot. Look at that. Okay, and yeah, Josh and Monty, cool. Okay, so no, do not disappear, sorry. Stand like lemons round the tree. You can look at the tree so you don't have to look at all the funny people. Thank you. Okay, and what you can be doing is eyeing which bangle you fancy. Unfortunately, you need to have, that's it. Rosie George is so keen to be prayed for, she's gonna be done twice because she can be done with Tab as well. Okay, uh, the bangles, the writing on the bangles is too small for you to read, but you can always swap them amongst yourselves afterwards. So you lot that are standing there like lemons, thank you very much. You've given your doves to the tree and you are about to receive two gifts from your church. One, your bangle, and secondly, the prayer of your church as we send you out to be the people of God at home, at school, in your activities, whether that's uh, scouts, whether that's swimming, whether that's football academy, whatever it is, and with your friends. Okay? So you better uh, open yourself up to God at this precise moment because that's a big ask, to go and be salt, yeah? Not stay in the salt pot, but to go and be salt at home, at school, with your friends, in front of the computer, on your phone, all times, all places. Alison, thank you. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this wonderful group of young people. Lord, thank you for giving them to us as a church family and to their own families, Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless them in the coming year. Lord, we thank you for the quiet ones, the thoughtful ones, the noisy ones, the doers, the craft lovers, the sport lovers, the fun lovers. We thank you that they are all different, but they're all precious in your sight. We ask you to be with them in school in the coming week, Lord. We especially pray for Josh and Liv as they go up to secondary school, that they would find friends and they will grow. But we ask you, Lord, that each one of these young people will not only grow physically, but grow in their love of you and in maturity. We pray for their families dealing with burgeoning teenagers, Lord, that you'd give them understanding and patience and love. And we give these young people, we ask you to give them confidence in themselves based on you, that they are grounded and rooted in you, in your love, and you will give them wings to fly. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, without destroying the tree so it falls over and uh, knocks my mum out, can you uh, take yourself a bangle of your choice? And you can swap them over afterwards if you get one where when you read it, you think that's really not for me. And the idea is that you can wear these and that they will encourage you. And they are very subtle. So uh, it's, it's just there to remind you. And when you've got that, then you are allowed to escape. And thank you for standing there. And then preschools and primaries bring your doves and the secondaries have shown you how to do it. You have to do, go through the same grueling process. So Rosie George, you're on again because you haven't had your book yet. Okay, so Lucinda, you're going to come with daddy if you need assistance. Matthew, Leo, Ari, Mary's looking really like a lamb led to the slaughter. It's all right, Mary, it'll be over soon. 
Well done. Can you give your dove to the tree, please? So we're talking about giving and receiving. Okay. Listen, you can sit down, my love, with Daddy on your, that's it, just sit down there. Okay. And is it Stuart praying? Who's praying? I can't read on the thing. I think Stuart's slightly busy at the moment. Yep, lovely. So you lot, just the same as the older ones, when you go to school, when you do your activities, when you're playing with your friends, yeah? You have got to be like little bits of God. Doesn't mean you have to be perfect. You're allowed to make the odd slip up, yeah? But you're gonna try and bring goodness to people. So we're gonna pray for you. So I suggest if you feel like a lemon, just close your eyes for a minute while um, Jessica prays for you. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for our children. Especially now they are gonna start a new time in their lives where they're gonna start education. They're gonna share with uh, the teachers and teacher assistants new adventures. Help them to enjoy and to learn more and to share happiness and joy and to be blessed every single day and to be away from any harm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jessica. Right, there is a book on the tree with your name on it. Yeah? Can you find one with your name on it, please? And take the one that's got your name on it. Might be around the bottom for some of you. The big heavy ones didn't go on the tree very well. And then you can go and sit down. Well done. Yep, yeah, it's there. You can see it. It's all right. What have I done with? Oh. Right. Okay. Tree still in plant in place, mum is still in place, that's a good sign. Okay, excellent. Right, okay, uh, so all of us are now going to sing together. Uh, this is not time for you to switch off children. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth. I'm going to try and live for God. Uh, do stand if you like to stand. Thank you, do sit down. Uh, I don't want any of us to think that this giving is just going to be hard work. It is going to be hard work. Did you notice the lady in, I think the first lady in the video, eight years of struggling to read a Bible on her own before she received outside help. It is going to be hard work. But give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into our laps. For with the measure we use, it will be measured to us. Remember, we started the service talking about oral tradition and the benefits of memorizing and the benefits of learning off by heart. We're going to have a go. Okay, I suggest I will read it again give and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. It's got muddled up. Okay. Uh, what comes first? Anyone remember out of that lot? Give. Okay. What comes next? And it will be. What comes next? Given to you. Next. A good measure. Wendy's good at this. Good measure. What's next? Yes. Press down. 
Oh, yes, shaken together, yeah? And running over. Into your lap. Oh. We'll be poured. We'll be poured. <laughs> okay. Into your lap. Okay. We doing all right on it? Let's see how we get on with the muddled up words, but no words in order. Okay. Uh, we'll do it together. I can't see where, clearly enough from here with my eyesight to know whether we're all managing it, but uh, have a go. Okay, let's go. Um, I'm not sure I can do it, but I'm going to concentrate hard. Give, and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over will be where is it will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured to you okay one last time with some help give and it will be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured to you okay and we hang on to that we hang on to if you remember whoopsie the figure of eight this process of we receive from God, we receive from others, we receive from nature, whatever it is that encourages you, that inspires you, that gives you energy. And that then that's what we then give out. And the process of giving then enables more to be poured into our laps. Uh, some of that, not all, some of that may be expressed through church activity. Not all of the way in which we give is expressed through church activity. And some church activities, breaking news, might actually help you to receive as well. Yeah, that is. Okay, so uh, as we draw to a close, um, going to sing a hymn that we don't actually know particularly well, but it's quite straightforward, um, which has several verses, as in the, as is the won't with uh, good traditional hymns. Um, and I wanted us to use each verse uh, to pray, perhaps for the first verse, we need to pray for ourselves, that this week, we will work out ways of receiving and giving. And then I wonder whether we would want to pray for others as they work out how to appropriately receive and give in the coming days. Um, if you can't think of anyone, pick the person in front of you because uh, you can, that doesn't, that's not too complicated or pick the person to your left or to your right. Many of you will have folk at home that you might really be longing for them to be able to receive what God wants them to have. You might know of folk at home who have things that they need to give this week and that they could really do with um, opening themselves to God to enable them to achieve that. No, you can say it at the end of this hymn where it says time to share. Is that all right? there it is yeah thank you <laughs> okay so we're going to sing and then uh, we are going to share <laughs> thank you and i think we probably most of us want to sit down uh, just to give us time to pray and but if you find that easier standing then stand oh do sit yourselves down nick stay there right uh nick side of the church are going to encourage the other side of the church to uh, 
receive, to go in peace, uh, to love and serve the Lord. And then my side is going to reply in the name of Christ. And then we're going to do it the other way around so that we encourage each other to receive this peace and then to go and live it out and serve. Let's go. So we're saying it to those people over there, okay? So here we go. People in the middle, split yourselves. Be schizophrenic. Here we go. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. And then this side to start. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.